welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, I'm Zaratustra, your host, broadcasting live from Los Angeles on this beautiful, sunny Southern California day in December. And uh, I always have to remind myself of being so grateful for having the opportunity that I live in this part of the world and um, we all have a tendency to take everything for granted when it's uh, readily there and it's available and everything is easy, is going our way and we uh, have a tendency naturally to ease into it and feel like it's always going to be like this and then we're kind of somehow uh, give in to the mind and the mind comes and complains so and doesn't matter where you are you could be living in Caribbean or in Hawaii or you can be living in the most ideal situation in the world but still the mind the thoughts come and find some kind of glitches or focuses on something and complains so it's really good to be alert and aware and grateful for everything that we do have and focus on all the blessings that we do receive every day from existence and uh, enjoy that and be present with it and be grateful for it from our relationships, from our health, and everything else. Um, the topic of the day, uh, one of our uh, participants asked me to talk about the subject of blame. So uh, it could be self-blame, or it could be blaming other people, or being blamed by others. So we're going to talk about that. It's the same ego, it's the same thought, it's the same mind, that comes and does self-blame. It begins and coming, it's a voice, comes in and starts blaming you, blaming itself. That you're not smart enough, you're not sharp enough, that you're an idiot, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you don't understand this, you are old, you are ugly, you're out of shape, you're slow, you're stupid, you don't learn, you're not worthy enough, you don't deserve to be seen, you don't deserve being loved. And it just, this list goes on and on and on. And so we start to blame ourselves. And for a lot of things that we didn't do in the past, for the choices we've made, the directions that we went, instead of going this way, we went that way, then this voice comes and blame us uh, that, yeah, you're, you're an idiot, you lost your life, you could have gone to, for example, law school or engineering school or medical school and get and become a doctor or a dentist or or a good lawyer instead you went and married your high school sweetheart and you got stuck into a little town with three kids and then after a few years your high school sweetheart left you for somebody else and now you're stuck with three kids and you're an, an idiot and you waste your life and it's too late now I mean, this is one of the stories. I mean, there's millions of the stories. You all have your stories. So if we want to sit down and listen to the stories, it keeps going on and on and on. So that's the nature of the ego. The nature of the mind is to come and blame you, which is simply it's thoughts. That's all it is. It's thoughts. Then, in the same time, the same thoughts, the same mind, 
conveniently would like to blame others, which is, is one of our favorite things to do. And we're being encouraged to do that all the time for everything which is wrong in the world and everything's wrong in our lives is because somebody else did something wrong to us and that's why we are where we're at. That's why we're screwed up. And it's because daddy left when I was seven years old. Mom was an alcoholic. She was abusive. Um, I got beaten up. I got raped. I got abandoned. I got shipped from one place to another place. I'm disadvantaged. I'm poor. I'm, you know, wh whatever. The mind will go and figure things out. So, um, it just picks something up, whatever it is. Maybe it goes, picks up the race, the color. Maybe it goes, picks up religion. Uh, and that's how it comes up with some excuses that it's disadvantaged or whatever it is. It's because culture or racism or nationality or religion. It, this story keeps going on and on. So there's a point in your life that <clears throat> awakening starts to take place. Awareness starts to settle. Awareness starts to appear. And self-awakening begins to take place, but a lot of times self-awakening doesn't take... It's not taking 100%. Um, it doesn't awaken every section of you. It awakes in a part of you. So not everything comes to awakening right away. So, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So as awareness starts to come, and we start to, let's say we pick up a book, and we read, let's say, it's in the beginning of your transformation, and you come across the book, The Alchemist, from Paulo Coelho, and you read that book, and that puts an impact on you. And then you go find another book. Let's say you read The Peaceful Warrior, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, from Dan Millman, or you read Celestine Prophecies, or, you know, or a lot of newer uh, books in spirituality. And then maybe you come across one of the teachers on YouTube, there's a lot of teachers all over the world, um, then you may feel compelled to go take a self-awakening workshop or a class. So you start to learn the lingo and you begin to uh, a little bit wake up to the energy, to awareness, and uh, the self-awakening mechanism starts to, its clock gets activated. Okay. But typically, the spiritual seeker is still seeing things from this point of view that it's me and it's the world. And if you come to this awakening and this shift in this age, this era in 20, you know, uh, 21st century so then you get exposed to the new age language and everything's about manifestation everything's about intention everything's about um, working on the inner child 